Hello, today I've got a Tenori on to sort out. It's always on. As in, uh, I think the switch is either not there. Oh, what's that in the bag? Oh, wow. How cool is that? A Tenori on t-shirt with little dimples on it. Yeah. Don't know why that's there. But anyway, let's have a look. Power supply. Uh, Tenori on. Ah, instruction manual. Here we go. <laughs> now, I don't know when these came out. I really haven't got a clue. I'm just doing sort of a quick repair. So I've done nothing in advance uh, about this. Apart from all I know is there should be a power switch there. And there isn't. There's just a hole. So I'm not sure if this was a, a demo one for a shop or something. I haven't got a clue. But it, immediately I can see that the screws are missing in the corners. So... It may have been screwed down onto something for testing. It's a nice case, by the way. Quite like that. Almost sort of, uh, yeah, it's just magnetic. Anyway, so I've got to sort the switch out. There's no switch in there. I can't see any switch in there. There's just nothing to get hold of. Anyway, babble, babble, babble. Let me plug it in, make sure it all works first before I uh, disassemble it and do any damage to it which I don't want to do right is that on plugged it oh yes it is on Tenori on ah and you see there little uh, white sort of LEDs running from one side to the other that's basically uh, time uh, there's sort of 16 by 16 that's 256 buttons on there uh, and it makes noises and you can program rhythms in and all sorts of things but like I say I don't know a heck of a lot about this and it's doing exactly the same on the back as well so that's really for just sort of visual so if I'm pressing buttons on this side you can see it on that side as well okay yeah well, that's enough of a look into the Tenorion. Now I'm going to open it and uh, see if I can make an on-off switch for it. Right, let's get this thing open. Now, you can put batteries into these. Uh, six AA sized batteries. And there are some little tiny screws. Oh, there's one hidden under the SD card there. Right, so I guess if I take those tiny screws out there let me see is that going to be small enough yes so I think these big screws around the outside this four sort of big screw holes uh, they should have screws in them I'll try and find something to fit them afterwards it's uh, it's not plastic. This is some sort of metal, maybe magnesium or something. Now, when I open this up, all, all these little tiny buttons are going to go falling everywhere. That would be... A... Oh, no, they're staying down. Oh, well, that was easy enough. Okay. Uh... Ah. Ah, they're in sections. Sections of four. Right. Uh, let me see. I'm going to put those back in here. So I don't get them muddled up when I put it back together again. Oh, well, that's handy. I thought for a moment they would be all separate little plastic pieces that would go flying everywhere and I'd be on my hands and knees picking them up off the carpet. But no, that's OK. That's four. Ah, now then, that's quite nice. It's just lots and lots of tiny little white LEDs. Obviously, this is just a display side. This is the back. Uh, and the other side, which are actually the buttons, they will, well, they'll have contacts and buttons and things and then LEDs under there. So this is basically just mirroring what you're playing on the performance side, if you wish. So I can see the switch. Where's my pokey stick? Right, so 
I can see the switch there. Uh, the switch does exist, it's just it's got nothing on there to slide it from side to side. So I'm going to have to take that switch off and try and find a replacement for it. Something with a bit sticking out so that it can be turned on and off. Uh, right, how am I going to get this out? Let me see. Well, I'll unplug these wires first. Yeah. Ha ha! Oh, got to be careful of these bits floating about because they're going to make it a little bit awkward putting it back together without those. So I'll just slide that to the back for a moment. So there's the main uh, brains of the Tenorion. I'm trying to get that in the camera better for you. Uh, so I've got to take off that power supply, that power switch sorry, which is here, and the problem is they put the display, so there's the power switch, and they put the display in the way there. I wonder if the display just unplugs, hopefully it does, because I'm going to have to lift that up to unsolder the power switch. Uh, do this as gently as possible. These are really expensive uh, things. Is it a plug? Please be a plug. Oh, bugger. I'm not sure if this is actually a plugged down into a socket. I don't think it is. Oh, f well, that's going to make it a little bit difficult on doing that. It is not a plug, a plug and socket to lift the uh, display. I think it's soldered into place. Right, I'm in a bit of a dilemma here. Now, the LCD screen is one of those sort of matrix LCD screens and I've not seen this type it's not a common version at all uh, and the problem is it's not on a plug normally a screen like this the manufacturer would put a socket so you just plug the screen down onto the board especially if it's uh, sandwiched and you've got bits underneath it I mean that's the common practice but this has been put together and the screen has been dropped down onto there and then it's been soldered into place with, uh, what, about 20-ish 20, 20 pins or something. Now, if I start to unsolder this, I risk damaging the screen. Uh, if I use heat, uh, I could crack the screen and chances of getting one of those is going to be almost impossible. Now... If I unsold it from the other side of the board, fine. I might be able to get the screen out. But the connections to the screen are not on this side of the board. These are just sort of soldered down to their own little uh, pads. And it seems all the actual main connections are running in from this side. So if they're vias and they are connected through the board, then, yeah, that could be... That would possibly work. I could take that off and put it back together again after I've taken off the switch. But if they're not, if there's no vias through the board, uh, for the screen that is, then if I just put it back on and solder this side, then I may lose some of the contacts on this side. So I'm in a bit of a quandary as to how to go about doing this. So as you can see on the switch here, there should be a piece of plastic sticking outwards this direction so you can slide the switch up and down and turn the thing on and off. I mean, fine, if you're using it on a power supply, no problem, just switch off the power supply. But if you've got batteries in it, you have to keep on taking one of the batteries out just to switch the thing off. I've tried uh, using the hot air gun across here on the bottom, not on the top, because these LCD displays can crack if they get too hot. And the only other way I can think of unsoldering this is by just running the soldering iron across the top of the pins here, heating it up, melting the solder, and uh, well, that's a bit dangerous, isn't it? And lifting it gently, hopefully, leaving all those pins in place and just sliding this piece off. 
and we're going to have a go. I know it's going to short some of the pins together, but it doesn't matter as long as they've, they're all cleaned up again. Uh, I'll just see what I can do at least. The trouble is this is that new modern solder with no lead in it, so... You can, you can kind of hear, as you're going along with the soldering iron, you can hear the, the, the pins sliding and creaking. Can you hear that? Probably not. I'll try and get it into the video. Hey, there we go. Result. Uh, now, some of these will be shorted together, uh, so I'll have to clean all that up again before I put the... Put it back down onto there but right that's the display move so i can put that to one side tiny little wind star display it's uh it's very fragile the board is really really thin on it anyway put that to one side so now we can get to the bottom of the switch here and unfortunately it's a double pole switch so when you slide the switch across it connects this one to the ground i'm assuming this is the ground and it connects these two here as well. So there's there's sort of two switches in one type of thing. I thought I'd get away with a single switch, but uh, it looks like I'm going to have to do a little bit more digging to find something to do that job. But anyway, I'll get the switch out now. I've been on element 14, which is a, a Farnell site, and I found these. They're about a millimetre shorter across here. But uh, that doesn't really matter because the pins line up. So all I'll have to do is bend these outer pieces out just slightly and there's the switch. So sometimes this uh, solder wick doesn't really work too well on these really fine pitch holes. And what I found in the past is if you get some old resistors or new resistors that you're not going to use and you sort of line it up with one of the holes this is a bit difficult to do and then heat the other side if you're really lucky you can just push the resistor through and that's cleared the hole and then what you have to do is just chop that piece off at a slight angle the reason for that is it leaves a little point to help you on the next one and then a little twist like so and that clears the hole and then you can move on. Oh no, I've just done that one. <laughs> then you can move on to the next one. It's a bit of a tedious job, but sometimes it's so difficult trying to clear these holes that I find this way works really, really well on these tiny fine pitch holes. So that's another one cleared. And even the, uh, the solder sucker is just, it's just too big to do this job so remember once it's through just keep pushing and that will take the excess solder on the end there and just chop it away you can use a little piece of wire of course but I find resistors are easier because you've got the sort of uh, lumpy piece of the resistor as something to grip now hopefully all going well just give the screen a little bit of a clean. So I've soldered this all back into place, obviously. Uh, now I've got to assemble it just to test it, just to make sure it actually works. So I'll start putting this thing back together again. There's the new switch on the other side there. Uh, don't think it's going to stick out very far. In fact, you might have to prod a little screwdriver in there, but at least you'll be able to switch it on and off now. So I'll put this together. The, dis the display is still working, but what's important now is that I can switch it on and off with the switch. Now. The reason that switch really needed fixing was, okay, you can unplug the power supply when you don't want to use it, but if you have batteries in this, then you'd have to keep on opening the battery connector and taking a battery out, or else the thing would just run down. But yes, it's all working. Uh -huh. 
Okay, it's all up, it's running, uh, and uh, I know I said I was going to do a little demo of the sounds and things in here, but considering that I don't know anything about this machine, uh, this is the best I can do. Uh, it's a great little toy, I've seen it on YouTube, I've seen some people do some really good deep stuff with this. Uh, they, there's more than one sound, obviously. There's lots of sounds and you can put samples in there and all sorts of things. Uh, make up entire songs. But uh, that's about my limit with this. So I'm not going to do a, a demo of what it can do. There you go. That is my demo. But anyway, I hope you found something interesting in the video. Solving tricks or whatever. And uh, I shall get something apart again as soon as possible. All the best. Thank you very much for watching.